the goal in therapy for interstitial lung disease that is progressing in systemic sclerosis would be stabilization of disease. So unfortunately, we, we don't have something that is going to repair the fibrotic tissue or the fibrosis that's already occurred. So when we are seeing progressive um, fibrosis um, as, as defined by either progression on high res CT, um, uh, most of the time we are really looking at those pulmonary function testing um, to evaluate whether patients are developing physiological changes in their, their lung functions themselves to, to track progression. So our focus is really trying to stabilize lung disease um, that is progressing. If a physician identifies interstitial lung disease, it's very important to rule out not just occupational exposures, drug toxicity, or environmental exposures, but to really be aware of different autoimmune diseases that can cause interstitial lung disease. I encourage physicians to have a good rheumatologic review of systems to be able to fully evaluate patients for autoimmune disease that can be concurrent with their interstitial lung disease. Treatment options for systemic sclerosis-related um, ILD, our first-line treatment is the use of Cellcept. Um, cyclophosphamide can also be used, but uh, Cellcept has been shown to be as effective as cyclophosphamide, um, yet it has less toxicities. So we do tend to use mycophenolate as our first-line treatment for interstitial lung disease and scler systemic sclerosis. Additional supportive uh, things um, that we can do for patients uh, with um, interstitial lung disease in the setting of systemic sclerosis would be pulmonary rehabilitation. So in ILD in general, this has been shown to improve uh, six minute walk tests and overall does improve health related quality of life. So these are the things that we you know, really wanna focus on, especially in a disease that we have no cure for. Um, so pulmonary rehabilitation can be a big aspect. Um, even just you know rehabilitation in general, uh, patients that are getting weaker, um, you know their health-related quality of life is not improving. They can get more deconditioned, which is, is certainly not good for overall health as well as lung function. Um, you know we want to ensure their nutritional status is, is also adequate, which can be a challenge in patients with systemic sclerosis with a lot of gastrointestinal dysmotility. So. All of the things, it's, it's really a comprehensive approach to ensuring the best health status in our patients with systemic sclerosis, um, focusing on all disease manifestations that um, is really important for just ensuring overall you know, stability or improvements um, with related to their pulmonary function.